All right, so um, so let's move on to strategy number six. Uh, this one is uh, from Nikos, the, the leader follower uh, directional divergence strategy. Uh, this one I think also Fede uh, has uh, probably some some guidance on because he's one that gave feedback on the strategy. Fede, do you want to uh, give your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I have been talking with Nikos also over the weekend. I think that is uh, a really interesting strategy. Um, but the most important thing is like to understand when the the strategy is like is going to work more, and identify really like trending moments in the market. But I think that this is a very this strategy has a lot of potential. It's more risky than Statarm, uh, but uh, it's more like the type of strategy that you can make probably good returns. Uh, but you take more risk. But well, uh, I think that can be really, really interesting. And that video is yeah. really cool. That video is yeah, I... is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like how yeah, and Nico is like actually created these videos. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what he used to do this, but this is pretty cool. This must be like a Jupyter notebook kind of thing. Um, I think that he's using the animation feature, right? Of the yeah yeah uh, yeah he's right My, let's stop talking Mike let's show let's show okay, the yeah, yeah, no, no. Well, I, I, the reason I'm talking is because I'm actually downloading the video right now <laughs> so, ah, yeah. so yeah so yeah it has another ten seconds to go <laughs> no 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 this is uh watching a movie <laughs> yeah okay all right so we're waiting for uh, Nikos's uh uh a video to download because uh, uh, yeah I couldn't access it for some reason but okay now it's finished. So now let's actually see the video. Hello, I am Nikos and this is my strategy submission for BotCam Cohort 11. I have named my strategy leader follower. Ah, sorry, Mike, can you increase the volume? And it's based yeah. on the observation that crypto assets within the same category, such as AI or DeFi coins, tend to move in similar directions. The approach involves selecting a leader asset and a group of follower assets based on discretionary research. For example, we might designate Solana as the leader and use a subset of Solana-based meme coins as the followers. Alternatively, one of the meme coins, such as the one with the highest trading volume, could be chosen as the leader, provided its volatility doesn't distort the directional signal. Once we've selected the assets, we apply linear regressions to their close prices over a defined time window and use the angle of each regression line as an indicator of directional movement. The aim is to assign a directional value to each asset. Every time the leader asset shows a directional shift, defined as the regression angle flipping from positive to negative or vice versa, we examine the follower assets. Specifically, we look for followers whose regression angles are pointing in the opposite direction and exceed a minimum threshold in angular difference. We then take positions on those assets, expecting them to follow the leader's new direction. We hold the trade until the regression directions of the leader and the follower realign. While this might sound intuitive, the angle of the linear regression doesn't always accurately reflect the actual price action. As a result, it's entirely possible for a trade to close with a negative PL, even when the regression angle behaves as predicted. Another characteristic of the strategy is that we're not concerned if some of the selected follower coins flip direction before the leader does. When this happens, it only impacts our trading volume and not the outcome, since we don't initiate any trades until the leader itself changes direction. What really matters is how often the followers that were initially moving in the opposite direction at the moment the leader flips end up aligning with the leader before the leader reverts back to the previous direction. While this strategy was inspired by an exploration of statistical arbitrage, it should not be confused with traditional StatArb. There are several key differences. First, it does not include a hedging component, which means the, the results may be more volatile. Most importantly though, it does not rely on co-integration. While StatArb typically requires assets with a stable long-term relationship, this strategy only assumes that assets are loosely correlated and tend to move in similar directions, specifically during potential directional shifts, 
not that they are co-integrated. From an algorithmic perspective, the main challenge was designing the controller to use dynamic exit signals instead of relying on predetermined take-profit values, since we can't predict the exact price where the linear regression alignment will occur. I implemented a continuous signal logic where the signal flips to a new direction when the entry requirements are met and remains in that state until the exit conditions are satisfied. As a result, the stop actions proposal method is responsible for stopping any executors that are no longer aligned with the current signals. I have tested the controller with a small amount of capital and here's a short video showing the strategy in action. I would like to close by thanking Fede and Mike for the bootcamp and all the knowledge they shared throughout the process. Awesome. Yeah, this was, <laughs> as Waffle said, this is a ASMR for algo traders. Uh, I really enjoyed the visualizations and, and, uh, and, and really, and actually, I think this strategy actually makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, uh, because as you mentioned, the, there isn't really a tight, like a core, like a co integration relationship between kind of meme coins and Solana. But um, I think I've also observed this pattern as well, um, just anecdotally, where, you know, when when the, the when the leader coin, which usually is Solana in this case, shifts momentum, there's a there's a much more levered effect on on, on any of the other like the, the meme coins out, out there. Um, so yeah, you know, amazing presentation. Uh, and uh, yeah. of course, yeah, any any anyone have questions for for Nikos? Um, first of all, congratulations, Nikos. This is amazing. And, and I'm impressed that in three weeks, you were able to create a controller that handles multiple markets and has a dynamic stop based on the, on the values of the position that you have open. So it's really amazing. Congratulations. And also you, you said, I don't know if, if, it, if it was you. But I think that you said that you were not a pure developer, so that's even more. You are more like uh, statistic. Uh, statistic. I don't, I don't remember if it was you or who. But yeah, it's me. I'm I'm not a trader. It's just a hobby to me. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing what you what you built in in three weeks. One question that I have for you uh, regarding to this is what, uh, how do you decided to pick the time frame? And how do you, uh, are, how do you plan to validate that relationship or or find what's the best uh, time frame to trade that? Well, I think that the the whole idea, um, like the first mover, it doesn't uh, how to say it properly, like the followers should not be very late. So I thought that it should be on the, like maybe one minute time frame or something like this. And I'm using, for all my testing, I used uh, a window of 60 minutes for the linear regressions because I noticed that, that that's a window of 60. Uh, I noticed that uh, I need the linear regression to react fast. Okay. If I if I if I implement it on a higher time frame, um, it's a bit more challenging. Yeah, it takes more time to to change the slope. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but I think that the uh, in that point is the key. Uh, you are going to find like a kind of key to to understand when the relationship gets stronger or not. Well, in that case, Farcoin changes a lot in that that moment, but maybe the thresholds and all stuff will help you to to really understand if uh, there is an opportunity there or not. 
And in terms of backtesting, do you th do you thought uh, how you can backtest this? Yeah, I I understood how I can backtest it. By backtest it, like I could make one by one. Uh, yeah, I could use uh, sol sol use the T and add the trading pair as one by one the pairs I'm trading. But okay. the, like ideas were <laughs> flowing, and I already implemented a, another version where the leader is ag actually uh, aggregated other coins. So oh, maybe nice. the highest the highest cap uh, meme coins are the leader. And then the followers are lower cap coins. Like I was thinking other things, and I I didn't care to to do so much back testing. And yeah, honestly, yeah. I don't think I don't think that it's something that you can uh, that it makes much much sense to uh, back test over a random uh, periods. You need to observe yeah. that the relationship exists, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's tr that's true. And also, when we were discussing the uh, this week, this weekend, what what can be changing the PNL of being more positive, is like uh, the last week or the last weekend, the market was trending a lot. So mm -hmm. probably as a stronger gets a relation, the the trend, uh, this will probably work be be better. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Are... But what I noticed, what I noticed is that the, the leader kind of changes all the time. For example, in the beginning, it uh, I think it was Fartcoin, and then it was Trump, like, and the the signal was quite distorted all the time. Mm -hmm. So you need to be on top of it, and I don't know. I'm yeah. I'm not sure exactly also how to exit. I think there there can be a better solution for that, but it's a work in progress. Uh, yeah, that that's a, a very good point to exit. Uh, I think that you can use. Uh, kind of uh, at first you you can measure how much is the opportunity right because changes the slope you you are like trying to trade the change the change in the slope of the leader against the other one so you know when the leader is when the follower is going to get the same slope as the as the sorry the follower will get up to a similar slope as the as the leader when that happens, it's like from that point you can like do a kind of training stop, uh, or you can use the slope of the to cut the trade as you are doing. But that's something that you can define or even test different ways of of doing it. Yeah, that was but, exactly my thought. The trailing stop. Yeah, yeah. and and another thing uh, that I would recommend you because uh, I am doing this also, this uh, type of analysis, uh, is that there are a few tests uh, to know who is a leader and who is a follower. Uh, ChatGPT mm -hmm. really knows that really well. So probably you can even like create a kind of task to do that analysis across a bunch of pairs and see if you can find some relationships there too. Or do okay, it, that's very interesting. Up, yeah, and see if they are swapping, chunking the times, and and see if they're. But well, very good. I'm very very happy with this strategy. I was very um, I was very surprised because initially it was just an idea to to explore uh, developing a different controller, but I it did ov over three hundred trades. And it's like minus zero point zero two percent or something, including fees, in over three hundred yeah. uh, trades. Uh, and I, yeah. I was not really focusing on, uh, you know, profiting much from it. Yeah, but I was very surprised yeah. to see that. Yeah, that's really cool because the good thing is that now you can put something in production that is stable. That's uh, the thing. Yeah. Well, okay, thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thanks, you guys. Uh